Good morning, everybody. This is Adrian. Um, so I've already emailed this list off to many of you guys, and I wanted to just make a quick video um, explaining and talking about this chart that I've made. Um, so you can see this is a very long sp spreadsheet of different alterations operations, and there's also a pricing formula in here that I've already inserted. Um, and these are my actual rates and my time for um, each operation. Um, I also have a blank. If you go to the bottom left tab here, there is a blank version. So you can type your own formula in. Um, you could also just delete these columns altogether if you wanted to um, and just have um, this as a menu. And you could write in your own if you're currently doing a time study on these operations. That would work too. Um, I'm going to go back to the one with the formula because this is the one that everybody's been the most interested in. So what I did was I broke down kind of from head, head to toe. Um, when I alter, when I fit somebody's dress, I start at the shoulder and work my way down. So I kind of put the procedures in that same order, um, just because that's how my brain works when I'm doing an alteration service. Um, now this is specifically focused for bridal. So if, this, if you're looking for a standard alteration sheet, I don't have one. <laughs> uh, I worked on this for a lot of hours trying to compile everything that I could think of. And there's still things missing. Like I realized I forgot to put in like changing a corset back into a zipper. Um, I don't have that on here, but this was just meant to be kind of like a head start for you. So because nobody really has time to put this together, I really wanted to get this going and just have a base for everybody to start with. Cause you might not even offer all of these different alterations. You might not offer, um, right here, you can see I have buildups. You might not even offer that. So you can just delete that from your list. Um, you might not even offer, especially to raise a neckline with a recut. Um, so anything that's on here that doesn't apply to you or that you don't want to offer or that you don't know how to do or don't like doing, just take it off. Um, this, Like I said, this was just meant to serve a couple of functions. Um, the first goal of this was just to share my work with you guys because I know that nobody has time to do this. Um, the amount of time that I put into it was a lot and I wanted to just share that because I know that not everybody has that kind of time during busy season and just to get us prepared for next year. And then the other goal, well, there's actually two more goals. Um, one of the goals was just to get the conversation going about rates in general. Now, everybody has asked me if these are really my rates. And I said, yep, these are my rates. Yep, this is exactly what I charge to people um, based on the difficulty of the operation and then based on how long it takes me to do. So you will notice in here I have two different rates. I have for like a custom or like a higher difficulty item, I have a higher rate. And then I have a standard rate that's a little bit lower for, you know, every other operation because it takes more effort and more skill and not everybody knows how to do these things. So they should be charged at a higher rate. Um, so that goal is just to start the conversation, get it going about um, how to be charging. I'm definitely not saying you need to be charging these prices, but maybe ask yourself why not. And either you'll come to the realization that you are at the level to get these prices or you can find places to level yourself up to get to these prices. Um, but you can change these rates out. Feel free to reinsert a different number to the rates. Um, if things take you longer, you know, take, change the rate of the time and it will populate a new number for you on the right here. That's the, the whole goal was that you can make this customizable, um, and, um, you know, just make it work for your business, make it work for you. I figured you guys didn't have time to type all this stuff in, <laughs> you know, like I didn't, but I just, you know, I thought it'd be nice to share. Um, the way I have it kind of broken down uh, on this sheet, if you have already looked at it, you already know this, but um, I have it in little groupings. So I have plain hems, hems with trim to replace, and then hems with applique to lift and replace and edit. So like removing actual applique and reconfiguring it so that it works. And each of these correlates to a different amount of time. And then I even applied different price to the really hard one because it also requires your design skill to put things back in a way that looks good if you're having to edit things. So your price should also reflect um, that extra difficulty. The other goal of this was to help uh, everybody kind of itemize their um, price sheets when they're working with customers. Um, I feel like it helps the brides understand why things cost so much if they see all of the operations that go into it. 
And then if they don't want something, you can just cross it off. It's itemized, so it's really easy then to say, okay, well, you don't want that bus start. If you don't want the bus to fit you this nicely, that's totally cool. We'll just cross that off, and then you've saved some money that way. Um, and then you have a documentation that she declined that alteration to, so that's helpful. Um, and then at the bottom here, I've added on some items that are um, not custom, but kind of like a little bit less common, but still stuff that I see frequently. So I have... Um, Train snaps, which are super important, I feel like, to put the train back together. You definitely need to charge for little stuff like that. These 5 and 8 and $10 items are where we lose a lot of our money because we're just adding on product and adding on time without thinking about it. And you definitely need to be thinking about that. If you're replacing hook and eyes on a sample dress, you know, that's $5. You could be leaving on the table every time. Plus, you're losing a snap or, you know, a piece of hardware. Um, and I have a wrist loop bustle. I have different types of... Um, uh, bustle configurations. Now I just put a combination bustle. Um, as far as bustles go, you'll need to figure out how quick you are at them. And I feel like the quicker you are, almost the higher you should charge because that's your skills showing. I don't know if that makes any sense, but let's talk about it though. Um, and then by the price per point, I feel like that can kick some people in the booty sometimes. Cause if you make a one point bustle, it still uses your, your talent and your design skills and your expertise. So charging by the single point can be really challenging. So that's an area where you're going to put your own personal twist on that and figure out what works for you. Because you definitely don't want to be undercharging on anything. Because you know when you've undercharged something. When you work on it and you're like, ugh, that means you've undercharged on it for sure. Um, and then I have broken down like booty scoops. If it's a single seam or two seams and it's plain and simple... It's still really hard to do, so don't like undercharge on that. Um, but you can see I've broken down the different scales. Um, I'm working on a booty scoop right now that I kind of didn't charge appropriately for because I didn't realize how difficult removing the actual uh, lace is on it. So you live and you learn with each process that you do. Um, I'm definitely not saying that I'm a <coughs> excuse me that I'm a professional at this, <laughs> you know, pricing thing. This is just showing you guys all of the things that I have learned and made a mistake on in the past and. Um, so that you have a foundation to work from. Um, but yeah, just so you can think about breaking down each procedure into its basic parts. Because um, chances are, if you're refitting a bodice, if you're resizing it, you're doing at least 10 different procedures. At least 10. And if you just say resizing bodice, $1,000, your bride might be confused as to what's going into it. So break it down into taking up the shoulder, lowering the armhole. Like sometimes you need to do both. Sometimes it doesn't sound like it makes sense, but if the apex is in the wrong spot, right spot, whatever, you know how it goes. Sometimes you need to move several different things to get the fit perfect. And that's usually the case. Um, now, any of these could be uh, discounted in any sort of way if you want. Like if you end up getting a dress that's, you know, thousands of dollars to alter and they really want a deal, you can consider what you want to do about that. Um, I do charge these prices and I do get yeses on these prices. I am in Arizona, so I don't know if that makes a difference as far as that goes, but, um, I had a lot of people already ask me, they're like, Whoa, do you really get these prices? Like, do you get people say yes? And yep, I sure do. These are the prices that I charge every day <clears throat> for my services. And sorry, I'm all choky this morning. I just woke up. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are the charges, prices that I charge. And um, people do pay these. Now, I also do offer to look at their photos first and see if we're in the same ballpark. So I think that's something that I do that's a little bit different than other, a lot of other seamstresses don't offer a consultation via photos. Um, if we're not a good fit via texting and photos, then we're not going to be a good fit in person for prices. We could be lovely, but we just might not be in the same ballpark and that's okay. Um, I usually will guide people to another seamstress that's close to them. Um, so they can get some quotes and kind of feel out if I'm too high or too low or whatever. And I'm okay with that. Um, I'm really confident on my pricing and my skill set that I don't feel the need to um, discount super hard. If I choose to discount or give somebody some part for free, that's, you know, case to case situational. The other thing that I've done here is I separated out some individual items. Um, so if you ever have a hem where you just need to do one portion, um, like just taking the crinoline out what that looks like on its own because I normally include removing the crinoline um, as part of the hem price and if they're just getting this knowing how to break it down into the pieces is helpful um, and adding crinoline or if you're 
um, just laundry folding the crinoline layer only and then the rest doesn't need hem there's still a, a charge for that there's still a price um, and like I said this can help build the confidence with the bride too because she can see that you have a game plan laid out for how to tackle all of the alterations needs on her dress and it really helps break it down in that way which makes it more you can just talk about it better which I feel like is really helpful um, I do figure these out with the bride sitting in front of me so that they can approve this price I have them sign off on it at the end of their fitting. And if they have questions on it, um, it's you know right there for them to see what all these little procedures cost. And um, it can be hard sometimes to sit in front of the bride and you know write down all the things that are needed. Sometimes I'll still forget things. I'll be like, oh shoot, I forgot the cup because you know the cup's inside the dress and I forget that it's there. Um, so just take your time and go really, you know, go slow and be thorough so that you don't miss anything for her sake and for yours. And um, you'll still make errors. <laughs> That's, I still make errors every day. I'll be like, whoa, this beadwork was a lot harder to take off and put back on than I thought. Whoopsie, you know. So I just make notes of that for next time. If I see that dress again, I'll be like, okay, I definitely need to charge a little more than I did last time, etc. And then you can also figure out these prices if you want to include materials, if you want to do materials cost separately. Um, like I said, this was just a foundational document. So that way you could start uh, ahead of the game a little bit. You can start with everything already, you know, typed in. And, um, I have some sections in here. If you don't like to narrow or widen plunges, if you're not adding a plunge person, delete that. If you're not comfortable, uh, restructuring dresses to make a low back, delete that. That's totally fine. Don't offer anything that you are not comfortable doing. Um, just delete it, you know, and vice versa. Go ahead and add stuff on here. If there's things that are missing that you offer all the time to brides, add that on here so that way you can see. Now, this price list is meant for back room. This is not for brides to look at. This is for your education. This is for you to uh, understand how you are charging people and how you're spending your sewing time and uh, really build that relationship with yourself as a seamstress. How long does this operation really take me? And really have that heart to heart with yourself because I think a lot of times, um, People think I'm too serious about how long things take, but it's it's the truth. Three hours on one procedure needs to be charged properly because that's three hours of time that I could be spending with my family or I could be sleeping or I could be catching up on laundry or I could be doing anything else. And I wanna make sure that I'm charging properly so that way that three hours of time lost on my personal life doesn't feel bad. And that's just where I'm at in my life. Um, you might be there too, I don't know. Um, but basically, I want to make sure I'm charging properly so that way I don't feel bad for missing out on, you know, participating in other fun parts of life that I could be doing instead. Um, so, yeah, when you go through this, if you have any other feedback for me, please let me know. Um, I'm still figuring out how to make a link to share this instead of emailing it to everybody individually. <laughs> um, I'm tech savvy to a point. Um, now, this does have a print option. If you go to file print... I'm an old lady. Hold on. Give me a second. Or there's a little print icon. There we go. Um, so when you print this, it will print. Uh, you'll have to set it up to print landscape. I don't know how it looks in portrait. <clears throat> Let's try it. Eh, it's okay. I'm a landscape paper kind of person. So let's just go back to that. Um, this is U.S. letter size 8.5 by 11. Let's scroll this. And this is a million sheets long. So... One, two, three, four, five. So four and a half to five pages. So that's exactly why I wanted to share this because I don't know that all of you guys had this kind of time right now <laughs> to, to make five pages worth of spreadsheets. So please enjoy this. I hope this is helpful for you guys. You are welcome to change, edit, delete, um, reformat this, print different fonts, whatever you want to do with this. Um, <clears throat> this is for your personal personal business use. That sounds weird. Um, basically, just I mean, don't sell this. I'm not charging anybody for this sheet, uh, for this information that I've made. This is just to help our industry grow stronger. And um, my goal is to help my industry survive. And uh, I feel like spreading spreading this information, uh, sharing this information, I feel like is the best way to do that, um, to help keep things growing. You got to keep sharing things. So um, yeah, don't sell this cause that would be weird and I'm not even selling it. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, I don't know that anybody would necessarily buy this anyways, but 
This is for your personal <clears throat> personal business use. This is to help you make your sewing business stronger. And like I said, if you're not charging these prices, ask yourself why. Ask yourself why not. And look at the last dress that you did. Take the last ticket of the last dress that you did and look at it with these prices and these times in mind. How much different would that ticket have been? Could you have made more? Could you have been able to take one less dress? Would you have been able to spend a little more time with your family and a little bit less time sewing? Or maybe you would have been hustling harder. Maybe you could have taken two more dresses and made more money for yourself. Just have those conversations with yourself and see where you're at. There's no right or wrong answers to any of this. This is just conversational. This is just to get everybody thinking and growing and setting some goals for next year. Like I said, I usually set my goals at Christmas time, but I think the rosiness of Christmas time doesn't help me think clearly. So take a minute this week during your struggle, finishing up the last dresses, take 30 minutes and give this some thought, feel the stress you're in right now and answer some of these questions with your live stress and see how you feel and see what you're thinking and check in with your body and check in with your rack and your times and just see if there's some changes you want to try for next year to make things feel less like you feel right now or more. Maybe you had a, a killer year and everything's awesome. Maybe this will help your next year feel even better. Could you imagine if you made the same amount per month but got to take two less dresses so you were less stressed by two less clients? Like that'd be awesome, right? So anyways, I'm going to stop yapping at you and get to my own sewing today. I hope you guys have a great one and I will see you in my next video.